Here we go. We've reached the end of 2023, mostly in one piece, and it was a wild ride in the industry. We had openings, closings, handshakes and smoke-filled rooms, and overall, a whole lot of fun. Let's pack it up and run it all down. This is the year that was 2023 in the theme park industry. January. Right off the bat, we got some great news. Cedar Point announced Top Thrill Dragster would be reopening, in some form, in 2024. On the same day, Cedar Fair dropped another bomb. They confirmed King's Dominion's Grizzly would be retracked with Gravity Group's pre-cut track, but Gravity Group wasn't done. They also announced they'd be retracking Megaphobia at Oakwood. That wasn't the only news out of the UK. Drayton Manor announced the Family Thrill Coaster. Alton Towers announced the Curse of Alton Manor. And on the other end of the spectrum, Lightwater Valley announced the Ultimate would be dismantled after being closed for the last three years. Same with Galaxyland's Mindbender. This was officially confirmed to be removed after being closed since 2021. To pile on the bad news, it looked like Lubbock's Joyland was going to be saved, but the investors backed out and the park would be liquidated. It was also the last day of Magic Kingdom's Splash Mountain in its current form, set to undergo a transformation to the Princess and the Frog. We had two major rides open, starting with Mission Ferrari at Ferrari World Abu Dhabi and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland. We also had a window into the future, starting with Universal announcing a kid-oriented park set to open in Frisco, Texas, Six Flags Over Georgia announcing a Biscotti Bowl coaster to open this year, and Dorney Park submitting plans for a 161-foot coaster. February Super Nintendo World opens to the public at Universal Studios Hollywood, and Europa Park places the first track piece for the big 2024 coaster. On the other side, Silver Dollar City confirms Fire in the Hole will close at the end of the season, and Arizona's Mattel Adventure Park says their opening has been pushed back to 2024. March. Right off the bat, Six Flags released their full plans for the 2023 season, focusing on family rides and attractions, including a new family coaster for Six Flags St. Louis, Rookie Racer. We also saw our first American coaster open to the public, Aquaman at Six Flags Over Texas, and later on, Air Force One at Fun Spot Atlanta. Not new, but two other coasters reopened. The Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. That had been closed for a long time. And Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando reopened with a seatbelt, but no longer had a comfort collar. Lake Compounds was also doing work over the offseason, revealing Titan Track put on Boulder Dash's first drop, and announcing Wildcat would be closed all year for refurbishment. Never to reopen was the Orlando Freefall. After its accident the prior year, it started to be dismantled. Also at Kennywood, the district attorney threatened to block the park from opening on time, saying the park wasn't safe. April. On the topic of safety, there was an incident at Worlds of Fun that led to fighting, stabbing, and that led to a chaperone policy for the park, joining King's Island, King's Dominion, Great America, Knott's, and Carowinds. At Six Flags America, their SLC Mind Eraser and Whistle Stop Park was taken off the park map, leading to speculation about its closure, but possibly an overhaul of the area. We did get confirmation of other closures, including Poseidon at Islands of Adventure, T3 at Kentucky Kingdom, and Bollywood Parks Dubai announcing its immediate closure, leaving their new major GCI Bombay Express unopened. On the other hand, we had more openings, starting with Tron at Magic Kingdom, then Carowind's brand new area, Aeronautica, and the world-class Intamin launch coaster at Park Asterix, to Tatis. RMC also announced they were merging with Larson, the company responsible for those giant loops, and right after that, they ship track the Fun Spot Kissimmee to begin Mind Blowers retracking. May. Cedar Point opens for the season, including their brand new boardwalk area and the first new coaster in five years, Wild Mouse. We also saw SeaWorld Abu Dhabi open to the public for the first time, as well as other coasters. Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid, Mandrill Mayhem at Chessington Worlds of Adventures, Matugani at Lost Island, Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun, and at the end of the month, Wildcat's Revenge opened to pass holders and called for a June 2nd opening date. Kentucky Rumbler also reopened with new sections of Titan Track. Disneyland followed Magic Kingdom by closing their Splash Mountain for the same renovation. As for more permanent closures go, Riot Playland announced their San Perla Volare Super Flight had been retired, and Disney World pulled the plug on their Galactic Star Cruiser experience, the immersive but very expensive Star Wars Hotel. Codaland also disappointed everyone again, filing a new site plan with the city of Austin, pushing their opening again to 2024. They were looking toward the future, and so was Holiday World. They started tearing up concrete around the Pilgrim's Plunge site, having sat idle for almost 10 years, and Busch Gardens Tampa's 2024 project was revealed to use the name Project Halcyon. 
June. On the heels of Project Halcyon being revealed, Busch Gardens Tampa announced they were set to retire Sand Serpent. Thermoc rides Wild Mouse. El Toro reopened after its latest retracking, a much needed addition to Six Flags Great Adventure. Especially since a week prior, the cable on King to Cost snapped, it rolled back, and damaged the brake fins. On a happy note, Mind Blower reopened with its newly installed RMC 208 track. Back to the mishaps. Europa Park had another big fire, this time in the magical world of Diamond Attraction, causing the park to be evacuated. At the end of the month, a major crack emerged in one of the supports on Fury 325, shutting down the ride and breaking into the mainstream media's news cycle. This didn't result in any injuries, but the incident at Sweden's Grönland did. Their jetline coaster derailed, resulting in a fatality. July. Glenwood Caverns had their own tragedy in 2021, a girl falling out of the haunted mineshaft ride. Now, two years later, this would be reopened with a new theme. Megaphobia at Oakwood would also reopen with this new Gravity Group retrack. We also had two exciting announcements. Universal confirmed a Fast and Furious coaster would be coming to its park in Hollywood, and a brand new $2 billion park called American Heartland would be coming to northeastern Oklahoma. August. This month was bookended by major announcements, starting on the 1st when Cedar Point unveiled Top Thrill 2, the official animation and stats for the renovation of Top Thrill Dragster. Not to be outdone, the same day Holiday World announced Good Gravy, a Vacoma family boomerang. Six Flags dominated the end of the month, as they released everything they were doing in 2024, including new coasters at Great Adventure, Over Georgia, and Great Escape. The announcement of Bobcat came on the heels of another announcement from the park earlier that month. Their Alpine bobsled would be closing forever in September. This would join Legoland Florida's flight school on the scrap heap, giving its final ride. Cedar Fair dropped a bunch of 2024 bombs throughout the month, including Iron Menace at Dorney Park, Snoopy Soapbox Racers at Kings Island. They announced they would end their Platinum Pass and start offering an all-park passport, and they reopened Fury 325 just six weeks after it closed for the crack herd around the world. While Fury was reopening, Steel Curtain was closing down. Kennywood put up signs saying it was done for the season. There were more announcements across the industry, including the rise of Icarus, America's tallest water slide coming to Mount Olympus, Voltron, Europa Park's new mock rides project themed in Nikolai Tesla, Adventureland, stating their indoor CCI, The Underground, would be completely overhauled, Fire in the Hole, the $30 million RMC redo of Silver Dollar City's classic ride, and RMC making their own announcement for their new family coaster model, The Wild Moose. On the other side, SeaWorld San Antonio confirmed their launch log flume, Catapult Falls, would be delayed until 2024. At the end of the month, Hurricane Hillary made a rude appearance on the West Coast, shutting down the Southern California parks. September. We had three major renovation projects announced, starting with Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Loch Ness Monster, having Premier Rides retract this Aero Classic. Lake Compounds confirmed that Wildcat would receive the Gravity Group's engineered pre-cut track for its renovation, and Dollywood had a bombshell of their own. Lightning Rod would retire its LSM launch lift, replacing it with a high-speed chain. There were other announcements as well, including the next Intamin Hot Racer, this one called Mahuka and coming to Wallaby Roan Alps, as well as SeaWorld Orlando putting a name to all that B&M track already on site, the family launch coaster, Penguin Track. We also had two late season openings, Primordial at Lagoon and Rookie Racer at Six Flags St. Louis. On the other side, we found out that two coasters would be done for good. The PAX favorite, Wild Train at Austria's Fantasiana, and the much maligned Skyline, Tidal Twister at SeaWorld San Diego. The owner of Spain's premier park, Port Aventura, also announced the entire resort was up for sale. As is the case every year, Amusement Today released their Golden Ticket Awards, including Wildcats Revenge for Best New Coaster, Air Force One as Best New Attraction, Fury 325 and Phoenix maintaining their title as the Best Steel and Wooden Coaster, and Dollywood breaking through, winning Best Park. October. This month started with another big announcement, Busch Gardens Tampa introducing America's first B&M family invert, Phoenix Rising. Then, Thorpe Park made official their mock rides hyper, Hyperia. Six Flags had made an announcement for Over Texas a month prior, but now it seems like they were pulling back. El Rio Lento, the combination of their two log flumes, was said to be dead before it even got started. What did get started was Cedar Fair's year-round operation of King's Dominion and Carowinds, but after one season, they pulled the plug, including California's Great America in the mix, going back to closing over the off-season. Speaking of closing, South Florida's most prominent park, Uncle Bernie's, closed for good after 28 years. The month rounded out with a bizarre story, a heavily armed man found dead at Colorado's Glenwood Caverns, and it seems like we avoided a major catastrophe. November. We started this month with not only the biggest amusement story of the year, 
But possibly the biggest story of all time, Cedar Fair and Six Flags agreed to merge, creating one super company in the regional amusement park industry. This is expected to be done in the second quarter of 2024. Six Flags followed that up by opening both Kid Flash coasters on back-to-back -back days. First Fiesta Texas, then over Georgia. And the same week, Knott's Berry Farm reopened Accelerator after being closed for over a year. Then, Drayton Manor shut down Shockwave for its own renovation, set to be opened next year as a sit-down coaster. Saudi Arabia made a big splash at Ayaba, unveiling the Falcon's flight lead car, and releasing a new animation from Intamin for this new coaster at Six Flags Kadia. Also unveiling the official stats for this project, shattering all the major coaster records. Saudi Entertainment Ventures, or Seven, also announced the first SNS Access coaster. Transformers prepare for battle, and they said they'd build two more. Poland was the country getting all the attention before Saudi Arabia, building up Energylandia along with the European Union. But it was announced their 20th coaster, a Vacoma Tilt set to open in 2024, was canceled. Back in America, we learned we would be getting a new park. This is Liberty Land, coming to Rapid City, South Dakota in 2026. December. Knott's announced the replacement for the recently departed kids coaster, Timberline Twister. This would be made by Zamperla, using the name Snoopy's Tender Paw Twister Coaster. Up the 5 Freeway, Magic Mountain filed permits to demolish their Golden Bear Theater, leading to speculation about their future plans. Cedar Point's future plans are clear. They're prepping for a big year with Top Thrill 2, and they topped off the back spike and started setting test runs shortly after. Staying in Ohio, the Cincinnati area was losing an icon that had been standing since 1886. Coney Island and the Sunlight Pool announces closure at the end of the year, being replaced by a state-of-the-art music venue. Around the world, Tokyo Disneyland announced Space Mountain would be closed on July 31st, kicking off a $400 million reimagining project, and Bollywood Parks Dubai would be saved after all. It was purchased and changed its name to Real Madrid World, and they stated Bombay Express would open in 2024. That's all for this video. I may have missed some of the most recent news, but I needed time to put this all together. Let me know if I missed anything, and tell me what stands out to you from this past year. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and give me a sub for more content like this. Also, check out my second channel for copyright-free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel for all things Major League Baseball. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.